Hello, hi. Uh, I'm Mutis Ali at Counterpoint Research, uh, Senior Analyst, and I am uh, delighted to interview Ali Kani, uh, VP of Automotive at NVIDIA. Hi, how are you? Hello, welcome. Uh, we've had a, a briefing of NVIDIA today, and uh, there was uh, several announcements. Could you expand a bit on how uh, NVIDIA is um, approaching uh, its automotive customers? What are the products and uh, services expanding upon? Yeah, I mean, I think at the core, we have, uh, you know, Omniverse on OVX computer, and there, you know, we're helping our partners create synthetic data and test their AV. And then we have the in-car computer, which we call Drive AGX. And, you know, there's a development loop from car to cloud to sim, and we're all constantly thinking about how to accelerate the development loop and how to add capabilities that really help augment the ability to build a safe self and safe self-driving car. Um, and so that's that's where we're uniquely positioned and that's where you know we find most of our customer traction. I'm Greg Vasich. I am the associate director uh, working in our automotive research team at Counterpoint Research. And one of the areas that was covered during the pre-briefing was the new Cosmos solution. Um, would you be able to expand on that and maybe address how that fits into NVIDIA's portfolio, especially uh, how it works with Omniverse and some of those other solutions. Uh, for example, for the use case you mentioned, um, for sim developing simulated uh, simulation data. Yeah. Yeah. So first, Cosmos is really foundational technology that I think mm -hmm. that is super critical for automotive. And there's um, a couple key use cases that it enables. The first thing is, is we're constantly dealing with like long tail of AV challenges. And what mm -hmm. we mean by that is, is it's like the scenarios that you almost never see. And it's hard, right. it's hard to handle an emergency vehicle driving by you or construction zone, or it could be like police officer on the road kind of telling you what to do. Um, they're just rare. And you can't go find that data. And so you need some kind of software where once you find a scenario that's hard for you, you actually say, hey, go make me more scenarios with in a construction zone with a police officer or with a construction worker holding a sign. And it just goes and makes you like hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of those scenarios. And if that technology is so good, and so we say it's based on Omniverse, what I mean by that is, is if the software is so photorealistic and physically accurate that actually you can train your model on it, mm -hmm. then it's foundational technology because you can't solve this problem without it. You can't just go find. It's too expensive to go find that data. And, and maybe it's impossible to go find that data. And you can't just find it once, right? Like to actually solve it, you need so many scenarios. Mm -hmm, right. So you can you can take like those one or two instances that you found in the real world and turn it into like tens of thousands. And when you do that, now all of a sudden you have a robust software stack. So that's one. Then the next thing is, is you're not just training your model, but you're testing your AB. And what Cosmos also does is it creates, it creates behaviors, it's intelligent, it creates behaviors that are reflective of your car. So let's say that I'm driving, uh, I'm, I work at Porsche. Mm -hmm. The way I drive a Porsche, it has a different behavior mm -hmm. than the way that I might drive a Toyota Camry. And so you actually drive a Porsche like a Porsche and I don't mean like turn on the AV. I mean, just drive it the way and then train the model on that behavior. You ask Cosmos can then say, you could say, build me more scenarios. Mm -hmm. It learns from the behavior. How does it accelerate? How does mm -hmm. it turn? How does it steer um, the braking, the acceleration profile? It starts to get a feel for the way a Porsche is driven. So then the AV actually behaves like the AV of that that company, that, mm -hmm. that user. And the thing is, is AV is not, it's not one, right? Like the guy who drives a Porsche would not want it to drive the way that the Toyota would. And so Cosmos can also do that. So it's how you can test. It's like, you know, how you train your model to handle it, mm -hmm. but also how do you test? And in, in both ways, it's super critical. Uh, and so that's why we're su super excited about the capability. I think that Uranus is really uh, important yeah. uh, in how, different OEMs um, can access the same technology. 
but tune it to them, their yes. own needs, right? Yeah, and we start to realize how it's kind of impossible to solve AV for the industry in any other way. Because mm. let's say someone created, you say, here's my software stack, and you kind of get in it and you say, this drives like, you know, a Toyota Camry. Yes. And then you're like, yeah, but now you're talking to Jaguar Land Rover, and yeah. it's supposed to be an right. off-roading vehicle. Yeah. It's the behavior of that car is different. Yeah. And so then you need to be able to handle it. The other thing is there's scenarios, right? You might say, hey, my Land Rover and my Range Rover yeah. actually frequently plugs in something to um, like a tractor, like a, sorry, a trailer. trailer, right? And so you're like, I want you to learn how to handle that. You yeah. might not, like a Toyota Camry, you don't ever need to solve this problem. No. But for this kind of car, you're like, this is important. So I'm going to give you these scenarios. And yeah. now you're going to learn how to do it. And uh, it makes it easier to handle these customizations in a scalable way. Um, doing it with rules, it's impossible. It's literally it would be the same as having 10 different stacks. Yeah. Nobody can do that. You can actually only have one software stack mm -hmm. and be able to scale that. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and so the software needs to be intelligent, understand those behaviors. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a couple, there were a couple of partners that were mentioned. For example, you have Uber was one mentioned on one of the slides, also Xiaoping was mentioned. Could you elaborate a little more on maybe the different ways they are using Cosmos? And just because those are very different scenarios. One's a mobility service provider, the other's an automaker. So yeah. a little more on that. It's So in this case, it's the Uber self-driving division. So okay. they are... They are like, you know, the way they're thinking about it is they've announced some partnerships with a sub couple companies that are building AV with them. And they have this partnership where we'll help give you some of the data. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so then we can help them create this generative, we can generate this data with Cosmos for them. Mm -hmm. And then they can then go give it to their partners who are building the AV software right, okay. and optimize it for it. Um, and in the case of XPeng, it's slightly different, but it's the same. It's the same capability they want. It just so happens that they're doing it for their own team. Right. Okay. Got it. Okay. One other question that's related, it's specifically about um, Omniverse, it's kind of the Omniverse component, because physical simulation, simulating physics is, is critically important when you're doing uh, this kind of uh, death development work for autonomous vehicles and, and ADAS. So what exactly, there was a mention of um, generative physical AI as being an enhancement to the Omniverse platform. Could you talk about that a little bit more? Yeah. I think this is the thing we're talking about here where- Sure. Okay. Where yeah you want to be able to generate synthetic data. Mm -hmm. uh, but not, don't even think about it as data, it's scenarios, right? It's not like, it's not the old way where it's like, here's an image mm -hmm. and you're training a model on like a 2D image. It's actually like a video of a car driving. And so you create this clip, video clip mm -hmm. of a behavior. And then you have many, you create many versions of it. So it's generative physical AI because now we've created these scenarios mm -hmm. and then we can train our model on that data. And now we can handle these scenarios so much better because it's just too hard to find, right? Like that some things are just too difficult for us to find and doing this, this is the part we talked about. The faster you develop AV is your six, like your success criteria is how good is your development flow. Or imagine someone who's manually trying to go find that data in the world mm -hmm. with his fleet of a hundred cars. Mm -hmm. Right. Like okay. net, you're like, it's never going to happen. And then, so then you're like, Hey, I can actually help you. Tell me, <laughs> what do you need? I, I built this foundation video foundation model that can do this. That's physically accurate. Mm -hmm. And now just train your data on that. And he's like, wow, you just saved me like 20 years of work. Yeah. Um, so. And I guess this has a significant impact on the robot taxi uh, fleet sizes that people are planning to that's right. deploy, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When we get to L4, it's even more critical. Mm -hmm. Because it can never yeah. not know how to handle something. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's an announcement of a partnership with Toyota, which is, you know, a very a big announcement with Toyota. Um, could you explain uh, what the uh, partnership is about? And yeah. And what you're providing to Toyota? Yeah. I mean, it, I think it's a foundational change with this partnership. Because if you pay attention to who we won in the past, we we were winning everyone who was building an L2 plus system mm -hmm. and less than 10% of cars are L2 plus systems. But so who was building those systems? It turned out that there were um, new energy vehicles in China because those mm -hmm. companies are really good in AI. They know how to build like, software like Tesla that mm -hmm. can drive from any address to any yeah. address. So they would say, I want a really high performance computer in my car and I want to keep improving the software mm -hmm. in that fleet. So you see, oh, there's all these Chinese companies that NVIDIA is partnered with. And then you'd find a premium OEM who's trying to differentiate. 
Mercedes Benz, Jaguar yeah. Land Rover, Volvo. They're trying to differentiate because they're not the low end provider and they want to have a rich experience yeah. for their customers. So, and we kind of so think of it as you almost want all of them. But then there's like 95%, like how much, what percent of the market that I just speak to, it's maybe 10%, oh, right? It's like, so what about the 90%? And so oh. all of a sudden, I think what's happening is, is two things. The first thing is, is Tesla with like the version 12 and even now the version 13 software, the software is getting so good that you're starting to realize I can use this mm -hmm. and I can use it in a foundationally different way than my current car. The current car actually just does active safety. It's just driving in the highway, lane keeping and braking if it's going to have an accident or if you're crossing the lane by mistake, it gives mm. you a warning. That's yeah. what a car does. Yeah. But now the Tesla with these new versions is actually, you're like, actually can drive me from my home to my work and it doesn't make a mistake. It's almost there. It's not there, but it's almost there. Mm -hmm. It's getting so good that I don't know if you guys see the attach rate of full self-driving has gone up 10%. So now let's think what that means. It's $8,000, 10%. So mm -hmm. that means he's making an extra $800 on every car on average. Mm -hmm. So now if you told someone you could make an extra $800 mm -hmm. blended on your fleet, if your software is good enough, then they no longer build a car the way they did in the past, which mm -hmm. is, I just want the cheapest mm -hmm. active safety right. car. Yes. Um, and so what we just announced is Toyota, the world's largest OEM mm -hmm. is using the most powerful software defined computer in multiple car lines and that mm -hmm. to me is like whoa that never happened before mm. it's not like the level four car no 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 mm. it's like it's just a standard car it's going to be multiple of those cars yeah. and so it's like they now believe in that vision yeah. um and so you know the thing is is once you get that you know you get that you break through for the mm. first time then there's going to be more opportunity right like i think people pay attention to what toyota does um, and so we're kind of excited, not just about that opportunity, but just what we're going to get, um, kind of, we're going to start to expand. It's mm -hmm. like, wait, right. here's mm -hmm. another volume kind of player yeah. who's now starting to realize the point is the dynamics are the same. You see what Tesla can do. And also you see what's happening in China. China is not to be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Most of these guys, most, a high percentage of their sales are in China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a right. BMW or a Mercedes yeah. could be like 30 or 35% of their car sales are in China yeah. and a higher percentage of their profit. Yes. So then if you see a bunch of Chinese companies building really good L2 plus software, yeah. Yeah. and then now you're like, I'm not competitive. Mm. It's not like Tesla where it's like, my customer is not their customer. They do nothing to me. Mm -hmm. It's like, wait, mm. I am losing my sales in my most important market, so I have to change. Mm. And so the combination of what Tesla is doing and what's happening in China, and the third thing is, is now what's China doing? They're exporting. Mm. And so now you'll see that kind of car in Europe. Mm -hmm. You'll see that kind of car in Southeast Asian countries. Yeah. Yeah. And so it kind of starts to create a desire to shift the way you used to think. Mm. And mm. so we're kind of excited about it, and we feel like the the shift has happened and now you know we're just trying to swarm all these yeah, opportunities i think it double charges the, the right. shift isn't it with toyota in the market and that's right uh, it, it gives that much more uh, volume yeah uh, and yeah. and uh, in, uh, available to yeah. the, the customer yeah. as well exactly who, allows it to yeah who was before saying i really need to do something yes. they're like well you already got the guys <laughs> you know <laughs> right. like so it's like you're not I can't, yes. I can't change anyone else but now you're like oh toyota so yeah what is what yeah. what is Honda or GM yeah. or Ford gonna do? Yeah. If if I can um, ask a subsequent question to this, which is how are the TS suppliers in this mix between yourselves and um Toyota? I is it a direct relationship with Toyota or you still kind of rely on ISVs and um TS suppliers to kind of build a relationship with other yeah. OEMs? I mean we use Toyota's infra like supply chain infrastructure, so they have a tier one. And we work with their tier one uh -huh. and then they have a combination like the software for toyota is met, made with a combination of help from like the toyota woven organization uh -huh. and then also um that denso organization so they're working together but it's the way they do it and so for us you know we're an open platform it's like just where you want to work we can work with you uh -huh. and we just support them with that model. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah i wanted to ask a question not as focused as much on um, ADAS and autonomous driving and those kind of efforts. But 
one of the topics that came up as part of the, part of the pre-briefing was generative AI and specifically agentic AI. And in past years, there have been some, some discussion in showing uh, avatars and also the possible use cases for generative AI in the cockpit. Could you be able to talk a little bit about NVIDIA's efforts there? And obviously, there weren't any announcements this year, but I'd be interested in anything you can add on that, especially in the context of agentic AI. Uh, so what I'd say is this. At this CES, we are announcing both Southhound and Serence are doing some things with us okay. in this area. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think there's an opportunity for a really smart concierge or intelligent assistant in the car. Mm -hmm. And sure, they can run on our platform. So I think, you know, it's an exciting field and we're supporting all the industry leaders. It's a platform ecosystem strategy. We work with all the players. We want to make our platform the best instance of that software that they have should be on NVIDIA drives. And mm -hmm. you know we're helping them both in infrastructure, both with simulation and uh, both with the computer and the car. Okay, all right, thank you.